is going on everybody welcome back to the channel still here at Mountain View Cemetery part two to me walking the cemetery grounds here um, this, this this is gonna have to be maybe not on the same day filmed but I'm gonna have to do different parts to uh, this cemetery because it is just so huge and massive I'm up in the hill side area now more um, up around some interesting like uh, you know uh, family crypts and graves and whatnot so uh, let's go check some stuff out shall we Lux is the last name Charles Lux he was I guess in uh, the meat business in 1853 he made his way to San Francisco where he opened his own meat market on Washington Street in 1857 originally he worked as a butcher before seizing the opportunity to buy cattle and land he expanded his holdings to include 80,000 head of cattle 700 miles of telegraph property in 1858 he entered into business with fellow butcher and competitor Henry Miller they formed Miller and Lux and their properties eventually included parts of San Mateo Santa Clara Monterey San Benito Merced San Stanislaus Fresno Tulare Kern and San Luis Obispo counties so he was in meat cattle he owned property that was uh, very very uh, interesting Charles Lux he was born 20th of December 1823 died March 15th 1887 at the age of 63 in San Francisco beautiful as we have talked before around there there was some money in this family let's go check it out it's got beautiful stained glass inside it's kind of hard to see through the window but we will do our best here oh wow I don't know uh... Okay, Charles is back wall top. Charles Luxon, Miranda Lux, I do believe it was his wife. So on the sides, there's hard to make out um, what the names are on the side because it's kind of dark in there, That just that little stained glass window. I would assume on the top, if you could see, top back by the, on either side of the stained glass window, there's busts. I would assume it's Charles and Miranda, a bust of them, I would assume. That is awesome. And it looks like Charles was from France and Miranda was from Rhode Island. And she was, Miranda was uh, big in the community here for uh, education. She was, uh, she provided, I guess, some facilities for education here, I guess, in Oakland and uh, around the area also. So that is interesting. this awesome stone James T Mathewson born in Madison New York November 6th 1831 died June 1st 1881 I love just the way this uh, stone is designed it's just beautiful and there is with the symbol the Mason symbol right oh my goodness this one is just as a palace David Colton I guess David Colton was a sheriff. He owned a newspaper in Eureka, California, renaming it the Eureka Union, and uh, studied law. And through many trades, he became a very wealthy man. His mining and real estate investments proved to be highly profitable. So he was in real estate, mining, um, he was a sheriff, he owned a newspaper <laughs> in partnership with three other men. But look at just the design here. It's just insane. I love it's like an Egyptian type thing here going on. Wow. This is God, this is nice. Look at that palace. Egyptian types design here. things crumbling the tile work here is crumbling you gotta watch your step here I think the stair I stepped up one of the stairs I stepped on coming up here felt a little loose too I guess it still does get visitors there's uh there's candles here some people have left as you can see inside's kind of dark let me see where they're all positioned oh they're on the sides here it's kind of hard to see uh, Ellen is on the right, second one down, if you could see, kind of hard. I don't 
not sure where David is located. I'm not seeing. It says our beloved in the middle on this one over here. Unless David is just unmarked. I found him on Find a Grave. It said he was in here. This is Ellen, wife of David. I'm going to assume David's in one of these ones here that maybe aren't marked. It's interesting though. It's crazy. That beautiful stained glass window that's they have amazingly not broken over the years. It's crazy. So it looks like David here was born 17th of July, 1832 and died 9th of October, 1878, aged 46 years of age. That's still pretty young, <laughs> but uh, that was uh, interesting. And this thing, like I said, is just, it's massive here. Watch my step here. Whoa. <laughs> It takes up a lot of room, as you can see. But, um, oh, that was a loose stone right there I stepped on. Be careful. <laughs> but it was definitely, definitely awesome, this one. It's a pleasure to bring you guys this stuff and maybe a little bit of, of insight into some of the people that are here. You know what I mean? Awesome monument. It's hard to see, but it's Stanford. Wow, this is awesome. Josiah Stanford and his wife Helen. Josiah was born in 1817, died in 1890. His wife, Helen, 1830 to 1909. Hey, what this monument? It, it's super tall and it's super awesome. And if that last name sounded familiar, it should. Josiah is brother to Leland Stanford. Uh, Leland was a 19th century politician and railroad tycoon, best known as the founder of Stanford University. So Josiah's brother Leland started Stanford University. No wonder. There's a grave is so awesome. Ah, Josiah be, be, planted and managed a winery that came to be known as Leland Stanford Winery in the Livermore Valley. It was later the Weibel Champagne Winery. It became later on. So looks like old Josiah here was in construction, it said. Also, I, I'd read before this. Um, and uh, wine. Tell you what, guys. I, I am getting tired, man. I did some hiking today. You know, last time I did some hiking, but for some reason today, I'm extra tired from hiking. Yeah, I do. I know I did the last few videos ago. I did. I did Millionaire's Row, and that was a hike. But for some reason today, oh boy, this little walk is taking a lot out of me. But. I would much rather hoof it through these cemeteries um, rather than take my car everywhere because as you can see, you know, these roads here, some of these little roads up in here are very narrow and sometimes don't have enough room for two cars to pass. So I don't want to get caught, you know, not being able to pass somebody and they're not able to pass me. So that's the uh, reason why I always tend to hoof it in cemeteries that have more narrow roads. I showed this um, a few videos ago also, but up in here, there's a row of hillside crypts that look like castles over here. Now these are kind of, you know, your normal ones, but the ones up here, these are just insane. These look like, remind me of castles. I like this design. It's a hillside crypt or crypt area here. I'm gonna 
go down to the end of the line here and then I'm gonna start looking at seeing who some of these people were because the last time I visited this area I was low on time so um, I couldn't really dig into maybe trying to find out who some of these people were So on the outside, this says Althoff Balls, B-A-H-L-S-A-L-T-H-O-F. Um, it looks like it's the, this is the final resting place of Hermann Balls, B-A-H-L-S, from Germany. Uh, he lived in West Oakland and was uh, the proprietor of Althoff and Balls, a book binding, binding and printing business in San Francisco. So book binding and printing business is really all I could find. This gentleman's name is Herman. Um, can't see in the door and the vent is or the opening is way too high to see anything but geez this is uh awesome. This door is just straight rusted. It's crazy. Look at these columns. Jeez. And the beautiful uh tile. Last name is Cyril, C-A-C-S, I'm sorry, S Last name here is Cyril, S-E-A-R-L-E. There's a lot of, uh, the last name pops up, a lot of uh, graves popping up, but this particular one I am not seeing popping up on Find a Grave or anything else. And if I could see a name inside this thing, it would probably help greatly, but... Yeah, see if I can see names. Captain Robert. Oh, Captain Robert and Julius Christensen. Damn. Those are small, small caskets fitting inside that. That's the stone area there. Crazy. Let me look up Captain Robert. Let's see what happens here. Now the only person uh, with by that name, the captain uh, name, uh, it was a pirate. <laughs> he looked like he was a pirate of some kind. He was some kind of uh, captain of a ship, but he died in 1670, and this Robert died in 1900. So uh, I don't think there's a whole lot. And find, I think Find a Grave even has unknown unknown, I think, on that. Let me check again. Correction on that. The birth was unknown, but the, the death, de 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 uh, death date was known. Of course, 1900. This awesome one is the Powell family. Let's see who we can make out in here. Oh, there's a Dr. David Powell. There's just, as you can see, there's a bunch of family in here of the, of the Powell family. So a lot of people, <laughs> as you can see, but there's a, definitely a Dr. David Powell, 1848 to 1918 and his wife, Margaret, 1861 to 1942. Aubrey, William Powell, William Jr., Robert Powell. Wow, this is just crazy. Nice little bench in there. I would assume there's um up here, up top, straight ahead, there's like a little special plaque area. I think that's for cremations too also. Stanion is the last name, Charles H. Stanion. He was a city supervisor in San Francisco from 1866 to 1869. Also, there is Stanion Street. It's a north-south street in San Francisco, California, marking the eastern side of Golden Gate Park and the western side of the Panhandle. It's named after Charles H. Charles H. Stanion, city supervisor. So there you go. Stanion and family, Charles. Let's check out this amazing one here. That's also just amazing. As you can see inside here. There's where uh, Charles is the first top on the left there. Bob below is his wife. It's kind of hard to see the rest of the, the names in here, but there's a Henry and there's other names on the back wall that probably are cremations right there. There's still flowers on top of that one. And Charles was born in San Francisco March 10th, 1897 and died May 27th, 1919. Very interesting. 
Now they have everybody else stacked up in here like that. And there's that one lone one over here on the side. I don't know if there's another one on the other side of that. I don't think there is, but this one over here, I don't know if you can tell from here, but there's flowers on top of it still. I think they're artificial. I think family still comes in. Mary Hendel is the name of this one over here. But this is just amazing. There's a small one on the right side and the back. I don't know, I wonder if that is for a child. It's kind of hard to tell from here. There's no name on it though. That top right, it's crazy. Those are some very interesting hillside crypts. Um, very beautiful. Uh, there was a city uh, supervisor of San Francisco in there. Um, very interesting. Uh, there was somebody who was in the printing business over there. We're going to go to the top of the hill over here. I saw something interesting on the top of the hill. Some kind of monument that looked very unique and uh, crazy. So let's go check it out. This one is very, very interesting. I don't know if you can tell from here, but that for some reason that's, that came off. But yeah, I could see an urn inside there. There's not even a casket. It's just one little urn, which is really, really crazy. And it's right here. This is starting to come off also, which is wild. Goes from paved again to grass. <laughs> I'm up pretty high up here. The cemetery, I got it's just I think it's I think it was what two if I if I'm not mistaken, I think the cemetery is like 226 acres. Something to that effect. And here's the back side of the ones I was just showing you down below. They go into the side of the hill. I wonder how deep into the hill they are actually. That's what I'm curious about. Like how far into the hills from, from that main structure. Well, I mean, some of them you can see the face plates, but some of them you can't. So the ones we can see the face plates, we kind of have an idea, but the ones that you can't see through the door, interesting to see how that would turn out. Now that one monument that I saw is up over here. Looks like there is like a big monument with like an elk or a deer on it up top. There's a bunch of graves around it but I don't even know what this would even be. I'm gonna go around the other side and see if I can make anything out. You can see up there, on this side it says justice. Maybe this is some kind of military area. There's graves around the base of it. And th these are old, 1893 to 1952. Pauline Shackey. This is like a super, well, it's, it's old, but some of these people were in here, put it here in the 70s, the 50s. On that side, it says Fidelity. Is there something on the front side that kind of talks about what this is? There's a flagpole right here. This has got to be some kind of military burial area, but I haven't heard nothing about it. Oh my. On the top, it says Brotherly Love. This is a, looks like a little, inside here is like a cremation area with little spots. I mean, I don't know what this, with the flagpole and everything, I can only guess it was probably uh, military. But it's all on the side of this big rock formation, which I find very interesting. People have put flowers on the outside. Let me look at this. Let me look at this on the door here. BPOE. I'm going to look that up and see if I can find anything on that. I kind of have an idea what this is now. Uh, BPOE, the Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks. Guess it was founded in 1868. The Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks has been recognized by the noble creature that is the symbol of the order so some kind of elks society organization 
Elks Lodge. Alrighty. It's from the animal from which the order took its name. Was chosen because of the, a number of its attributes were deemed typical of those to be cultivated by members of a fraternity. The elk is distinctly an, an American animal. It habitually lives in herds. Well, so it looks like an elk's lodge kind of uh, area where people can be, um, who are members, I guess, can be buried. Interesting. I don't, I'm not real familiar on the whole elk's thing. Anybody, any of you guys that are familiar with that, you let me know like a little bit more about it, but that's a little bit what I found. There's burials out here, and then there's inside too, which is very interesting. I love the rock formation. And on the outside, the front of it, with the elk up top, it says uh, brotherly love. Very, very interesting. There are some military veterans here. William S. McClure, Sergeant U.S. Army, World War II, 1918 to 1989. So he, I would assume this guy died of natural causes. Died in 1989. Glad I found out a little bit about this Elks Lodge or Elks Club deal. Like I said, I'm not real familiar with that stuff. Um, I think there's an Elks Club or Lodge over here in Alameda, California as well that I'm not sure. I think my uncle actually might have been a member of, but um, I'm not able to ask him because he's no longer with us, like what the deal was on it. But like I said, if some of you guys know, throw it out in the comment box. Yeah, there's just walking trails that span up in here for miles. You can just walk forever in here. Like I said, I could probably do 100 videos, 100 parts to this video, you know, just walking around in here. It's crazy. Now I'm getting into like, it looks like an older area here. There's a, <laughs> a porta potty. I don't think I've ever gone to the bathroom in the, in the side of a cemetery before, and I don't think I want to start. I, God knows what's living in that porta potty right there. But some of these stones are real hard to make out, too. But geez, some of these are old. Some of these are super old. I would assume the ones way up in the back in the hills are the old, some of the oldest, I guess, or I don't know. M. L. Winnens died August twenty second, eighteen eighty one, aged. Oh God, I can't even see. It's so rubbed out. It's crazy. And there's one right here. <sighs> Sorry about such a long video, guys, but this is just amazing stuff. Margaret Turnbull, 1837 to 1889, which is crazy. Like I said, this is just amazing stuff. Yeah, look at it's fallen over it's behind Celine Cardinet it's kind of the rest of the stone is not able to be made out this is definitely an older part not so well taken care of higher up in the hills here of this cemetery Huey Buck Noy died February 4th 1880 aged 26, I think 26 years entrusted in Jesus. That's interesting. Damn, I'm going down toward on lower land now here. Interesting grave area. This whole area is just very, very unique. Very cool. Sorry if this video is so long, guys. Jeez. Maybe I'll break it up into a third video or something, but look at this one, Miller. Elizabeth Miller. Died June 4th, 1869, age 35 years. 
for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised. Whoa, that's a heavy duty message. Well guys, I am out of here. That's it for this video. Um, I'm gonna have to um, come back. I mean, there's just sprawling, you know, spacious hill areas. And, there, and the more I walk this place, the more I find. Maybe we'll do uh, more videos in the future from here. If you are digging this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon. Therefore, you can be notified of all of my future uploads. Once again, it was a pleasure bringing you this video. And I'll talk to you soon.